In this video, we're going to take a look at defining a function in Python. And in this section of the course in general, we'll be taking a good look at functions and what they are and how to use them. In programming in general, there are three basic paradigms, let's say, for structuring your code. You can write procedural code. And an example of a procedural programming language might be C. This means that you structure your code into functions which call each other. And that's what, what we're going to be looking at in this section of the course. We have so far been basically writing procedural code. We just haven't defined our own functions yet. We can also have object oriented programming languages. An example of one of those will be Java. And this means that your program consists of objects which interact with each other. And in fact, in Python, almost everything is actually an object. Even a number is an object. We can also have functional programming languages. I'm only aware of one pure functional programming language, and that's Haskell. And this means that basically you pass functions to each other. And in functional programming in general, you avoid things like loops and various other things that we haven't really discussed yet in favor of functional programming techniques. So where does Python actually fit into this? What kind of programming language is it? Well, like many other programming languages, you can do elements of all of these in Python. So Python is basically an object-oriented language, but we can also do procedural programming in it and we can do functional programming. And we'll be looking at all three of these in this course. In this section, we'll focus on procedural programming. Let's start by writing a simple program. I'll say response here, just a variable I've made up equals input. How are you? Then the user is going to enter something and we'll check the response. Let's say if response equals OK. And let's check for the lowercase version as well. Or response equals OK. Then in that case, I'm going to print excellent. Now we could check for other responses, but I'll just have an else here and say print. Oh no. <laughs> so notice here that when I have this or, I have to repeat response. So here I'm checking is response OK, uppercase letters. And here I'm checking is response OK, lowercase letters. I can't just write if response equals OK or OK. I've got to repeat the response variable. This is something that sometimes confuses beginners because in everyday speech, we would say if response is OK or OK. But here we have to explicitly say what we're comparing both times. Is response OK or is response OK with lowercase letters? Now let's try this program out. So I'm going to say Python and the name of the file. How are you? Let's say OK. It says excellent. I'm going to put a, some punctuation there in a space. Let's run it again. So OK, lowercase letters, that works as well. How are you? Let's say I'm bad. And it says, oh no. Now, we might want to use this code multiple times within our program, or it might be part of a library of code that we're building up. It might be just one thing that we can do, and we have to do this quite often when we're writing programs. So we want to sort of package it up somehow. And one thing we can do is put this in a function. How do we do that? Well, let's go up here to above where we've written the code. And I'm going to say def, and this is short for define. And I'm going to make up a name, just like I do with variables. And just like with variables, I'm going to use lowercase letters, and I'm going to separate them with underscores if I have more than one word. And if I want to use numbers, that's fine, but a number can't be the first thing in the name. So let's call this maybe ask user status. Now, unlike when I'm creating a variable, 
I need round brackets here, an open and close round bracket. And then I need a colon, just like we have when we're creating an if statement or a for loop or something. Now I've got an error here now, and that's because this stuff now needs to be indented to say it's part of this ask user status function. Let's just select all of this and hit the tab key. And I might as well get rid of this blank line here. Not that it makes any difference to the program when it's running. Now, what does this do? Well, if we run this now, nothing happens at all. What we've done here is we've defined a function. A function is just a block of code which you can run whenever you need it. To actually make the function run, I have to call the function. So let's go down here and get rid of all of the indent and then just type ask user status and the round brackets. The round brackets are what clue you in to the fact that it is actually a function. And notice I'm not going to repeat the def keyword here. Here, I'm not trying to define a function. I'm just trying to make this function run. I'm just trying to call this function. So if I run this now, let's see what happens. How are you? So it's actually running the code. And you can see that it works. So I can now run this block of code whenever I want it in my program. I could run it again immediately if I wanted to. I could even run it in a loop. Let's try this, how are you, okay? And it just asks me again, how are you, okay? But I'll delete the second invocation for the moment. So try this out for yourself. Type out some code that does something and then put it in a function by adding def, a function name, open and close round brackets and the colon above that code and you have to indent the code to say that it's part of this function. And then you can call the function within your program. You've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and Machine Learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.